On today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. So you're thinking about getting an outdoor wireless security camera. As most of you guys already know, I own several of these real link Argus PT solar security cameras. I have several of them down in my Florida place and I also have a few up in my Connecticut place. I've owned them for over a year now so I figure let me do a review. Caught a lot of stuff going on down in Florida while I wasn't there. This guy that seemed like an hour earlier he scouted the place then he brought a buddy back. There's a bolt back there, there's two bolts back there. If you listen, because these do audio too, you could definitely tell they were trying to do something here. Do something about doing? Yeah, we gotta go. Come I don't care. Thankfully, I have some friends that are watching a place for me, and they saw what they were doing, so they went over and checked it out. What's up, man? I even caught the tax assessor assessing the property. Looks like I had a few coyotes trespassing. And that sure looks like a bobcat to me. As you can see, the night vision works pretty good on these cameras. This coyote looks like he caught something. This is a video of my place up in Connecticut. I have this one mounted up on a rooftop. And one more of my Florida place. It looks like the trash panda raccoons exploring the area. So enough of the security recordings now. On to the cameras I use. So since I've had many requests, here it is. It's the unboxing and setup of these real link Argus PT cams. Very easy setup. They have an app for the iPhone, Android, and also a Windows app. The camera lens has a nice wide 105 degree viewing angle. It has a 140 degree tilt angle and a 355 degree pan that you can control from your smart camera or your computer. This camera accepts a micro SD card class 10 or higher up to 64 gigabytes and the reset hole is right there if you need to reset the unit. Also comes with a two-way audio and an alarm feature. This is where the main power switch is located for the camera. Charging port and solar power connector connect here. And of course your 2.4 gigahertz antenna connection. The 2.4 gigahertz antenna is adjustable for best wireless reception. It's also supplied with a quick release mounting bracket. So you can mount it in different areas and you can quick release the camera to take it off for servicing. Supplied with a belt if you'd like to put it on a pole. Three foot charging cord. And of course mounting hardware. It does come with a pretty in-depth instruction manual. Of course stickers to let everybody know don't mess around. They're on camera. I don't care. This is the supplied solar panel that comes with the kit. It's a 3.2 watt, 6 volt solar panel. The mounting pedestal is 6 inches long and pretty much adjusts to any angle that you'd need to mount it. And of course, mounting hardware. So these are where I have my cameras mounted. Of course, you want your solar panel to have as much southern exposure for the sun as possible. That camera looks at the back of my trailer. And this camera, of course, looks at this. 
which is my container and my garage and all that, my boat. And I have one more camera. And that one looks at my driveway coming in and the front side of my trailer. So setup is pretty easy, so I'll go through that quickly. Go to the Play Store, search for Real Link. I already have it installed, so I'm going to open that. I already have all these. It'll show not connected on the battery cameras. The plugged in cameras will show if they're connected. Click that plus to add. We're going to scan this. It says you need to configure Wi-Fi settings on the newly added. We will click that. Make sure the camera is powered and turned on. So we are going to turn the camera on. You'll hear it making a noise. I heard the ding. Put the password. Scan now. And it's that easy. Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to Rio Link. You can make a password to each individual camera. Name your camera. It will be an outdoor scene. A few notes to read through. And then you can, of course, save the QR code. I did not put an SD card in there yet, but I will. Of course, when you do this one way, the tilt will lift higher one way than the other. I have it muted right now. I'm on low quality. You can do 4 megapixel, which, of course, takes more bandwidth. You could take the watermark of the real link off if you'd like. You could rearrange your description and the time date if you'd like. Move them wherever you want on the screen. Specific assigned areas. Now the battery versions of these, you cannot do presets. The powered ones that are powered all the time, you can do a preset for the indoor style cameras. I'm impressed with them. Like I say, I've been using these over a year. The only issue I do have with them is if it's cloudy for a long time and you get a lot of motion or if you're using it a lot, it will drain the battery and the camera will die. And sometimes at night when something triggers it, as it's waking up, it'll have a real bright image that you can't see what's going on, but it you know corrects itself fairly quick. It's battery powered, so it has to go to sleep, so you can understand that part. So that's pretty much it. I mean, the app itself, you have a lot of settings. It tells you your battery, your network. You could flip the display if you mount this upside down. You have your frequency flicker, day and night mode, your scene if it's outdoor or indoor. You can adjust the brightness of the actual camera itself. Camera name, this is where you put where you want the camera name to be. Bottom right is normally what I use for the camera name. The date, you can move it wherever you want so it doesn't interfere with what you're trying to record or see. Top center is decent for this. You can hide it if you'd like. Here's where you can turn off the real link watermark if you want. And you can actually privacy mask areas if you don't want something to be triggered like if you put it near a road and cars are going by all the time you can mask so that does not trigger the motion infrared motion sensors on you can adjust the sensitivity 80 percent usually pretty good for outside camera recording is on you can set a schedule if you'd like Here's your post motion recording duration. I do 30 seconds. Overwrite is because this has circular recording. Like most security cameras, 
if it runs out of space on a card it's going to start overwriting the oldest video push notifications that I turn on because it'll push it to the app and tell you when there's motion email alerts you can set up your email in here so if you have Gmail or whatever else you have to look up what the settings are on it but that's fairly simple siren this is if you want a siren on motion alert you can actually do it through the app too which I'll show you if you want to share this camera with somebody have them scan this and it'll put it on their app so they can use it time lapse you could set up I've never used that before let's see there's no SD card so it can't do it but that's a pretty neat feature and of course advanced if you want to change the password date and time record audio yes I keep it on infrared lights yes auto LED status you could turn that off just in case you don't want someone to notice that you have a camera but it's usually pretty good for someone to see that you do have a camera you can reboot from here and you can actually restore the factory from here and that's pretty much it so the siren feature is right here trigger audio alarm I used that feature when someone was behind my trailer it looked like I don't know maybe they're trying to get water or something and you can see him actually pointing up at the camera like yep I know you're here so that's pretty much it you have playback which I don't have an SD card it gives you cloud space I've never set up the cloud space sorry and you can talk which it'll probably feed back hey what's up and you can click here can you hear what's going on hear it on my my phone here my phone here of course it's feeding back pretty neat shows a little motion going on up there so I'm going to put my SD card in here and do another video so I can show you actually what it looks like from this camera so I have a 16 gigabyte SD card here that I'm going to use first I'm going to turn it off so now it's off I'm going to pivot the head so I can get to the SD card access make sure this is pushed in well one to be weather tight and two so the tilt will fully go without getting hung up now I'm going to turn it back on there we go don't mind the crotch view we will bring this back up it's on fluent so you want four megapixel and then I am going to record so this is recording on the SD card right now you can see that right you see a little motion icon on the right there I'll stop recording and we'll see what we got so now if you want to go to playback there's today's playback turn this on and go to playback there we go don't mind the crotch view so that's playback on the phone don't mind the crotch view so this is recording on the SD card right now I'll stop recording so now I think what I want to do I'll shut this off because it's not mounted it's not a Windows app I'll show you how that works here's a real link app for Windows that's a live view from outside you can make it full of course here's all the things you could do audio alarm PTZ talk record or snapshot so I'm going to do PTZ I could show you how this actually works make sure you have a good connection here oh wow that went a little too far 
you see what happens if you don't have a great connection. See, there is lag. You got to have really, really good connection, which apparently I don't. So if you want to switch to Fluent, right click, hit Fluent. It changes it so it's not as good of a resolution, but you can move it. You know, you'll have a little better control. So here I'll show you. So now if I want to move it, it's a much better reaction time. And then if you want to look at it again, you can go back to clear. I want to add this camera so I have to turn it back on. Click add device. It's asking for a password. And there we are. Oh, it's got the infrared on. We'll shut that off. See, it's pretty simple. So I hope I gave you enough information so you can choose whether you think these cameras are right for you or not. I provided links down below in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products to use are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.